Hi, my name is Aja King, and these are some of the ingredients and tools you'll need to make your very own hot sauce. Can't wait to get started. Hi, I'm Aja King, and welcome to my kitchen, or I guess welcome to my yard. This is my daughter, Carly King, and we are here for the um, Deschutes County Library Systems Fermentation Month. We are going to be talking today about making fermented hot sauce. It's super easy, it's fantastic, um, and the hardest part about it is waiting for it to be finished because there's a, a time lag, it takes some time to ferment, and so that's really the hardest part is like waiting for it to be finished. So we're gonna just dive right in, we're just gonna get started. I'm gonna talk a little bit about our ingredients, and um, yeah, here we go. Um, all you really truly need to make fermented hot sauce is hot peppers, salt, and water. The hot peppers provide the, like the heat, it provides the flavor profile, it provides the, the color. The salt you get, you want to use a kosher salt or a sea salt, nothing iodized. You don't want to use like your table salt. The, iod, the iodine in the iodized salt actually acts as an inhibitor, so it won't ferment the way you want it to. And then water. Water is the last ingredient, this is really all you need. And when you use water, you're going to want to use water that's non-chlorinated because chlorine also acts as an inhibitor. We're really lucky where we live. Our water that comes out of our tap is fantastic. So I just use tap water, but if you have a high chlorine profile in your water, use still water or bottled water. Um, that said, that's really all you need, three ingredients. So it's really easy. Now, where the the kind of the artistry kind of comes in is where you add the extra stuff to make the hot sauce the way you like it. I happen to like a hot sauce that has a little garlic and a little onion and a little of this and a little of that. And so you just add it, you just put it in there and it's really simple. And it's, I love, the one thing I love the most about it is you don't need a ton of weird um, utensils. I literally have a cutting board and a knife mason jar, lid, what else? Like, that's it. You don't, you don't need a ton of weird ingredients. You don't need a lot of complicated um, things to use. It's just basically you're just cutting stuff up. So let's go. Today, Carly's gonna make a jalapeno hot sauce. She's also gonna make some jalapeno, fermented jalapeno chips which you can make at the same time and it's because it's the same ingredients, it's really easy. So she's gonna make jalapeno, it's just jalapenos, a half an onion and about four um, garlic cloves. The one I'm gonna be doing today is um, with habaneros, it's a little spicier, a little hotter. I'm also going to be using onions and garlic as well as some carrots, <laughs> as well as some carrots. So these carrots I got, they're from my garden, I just, I have them. What you're gonna use about one medium sized carrot, just just go to the store and buy it. You don't have to have it from your garden if you don't have a garden. So don't let that don't let that stop you. Like just go buy the goodies that you need and just do it. Um, a little bit of safety. These do get hot, so we're gonna put on our gloves. And safety first. Safety first. <laughs> and Carly's gonna start, she's gonna cut those jalapenos. Just a rough chop. She's gonna take the stem off, this little guy, take that off, we don't really need that. And she's gonna rough chop these um, and almost fill that container. I'm gonna do the same thing with the habaneros. I'm basically just taking the stem off and cutting it. You don't need to um, chop it too fine. You don't need to cut it, it doesn't have to be pretty. Literally, you can just take these habaneros, pop the stem off and just kind of cut it in half. Plop it right into your jar. Super simple. Question. Yes, ma'am. Um, how many of these, how many uh, jalapenos is it going to take to fill up this jar? My guess is it's probably going to take Roughly. about six, maybe? Okay. About so about if six. I were to go to the store, I would guess six to eight? I would guess six to eight. Okay. The jalapenos, you're going to want more because they're smaller. Um, but yeah, six to eight. It's okay. not very many. And I'm keeping the seeds to keep the heat. Keep the seeds to keep the heat. Thank gotcha. you. Good job. All right, so we're gonna just pull that off. Really easy here. Um, I like adding the onion and the garlic, but you can add whatever you want. Honestly, you can put 
pineapple in there and do like a Ooh. pineapple jalapeno. This habanero, habanero and peaches are amazing together. So if you have, you know, you go buy some peaches, you can do a habanero peach. Um, what else? Like just kind of pick a flavor profile that you like and go for it. Um, so I know that tomatoes are usually used for salsas and stuff. Mm -hmm. Would that be good in there? You can. Do they work yeah, well? It, it works. Yeah. I know that they're acidic though. They are, but it actually works. It works pretty well. No, okay. they actually do. All right. Um, you just need to remember that the bottom line, what you're doing is you want the hot stuff. So lots of the hot stuff and then some of the other things. Um, you don't want to overpower it with other flavors because really what we're looking for is the hot stuff. Gotcha. So that's a good question. I'm trying to think of some other really good combinations. I know people will make, um, use blueberries when blueberries are in season. Um, I'm, I'm using carrots, which sound weird, but actually it has a really nice um, kind of vegetal flavor to, to your mix. What about like, I'm trying to think of like just things that people would be growing. Like mm -hmm. what about like radishes or like? Yes. Do, I mean, bell peppers aren't hot pepper, but could they still be fermented and still have a good, like, would that be good in, I don't know. Yeah, so you can do this with bell peppers. It makes a really mild sauce, um, almost a salsa. So more for like the people who like the, like the taste and not the heat. Right, gotcha. yeah. And if, if you like just a little bit of heat, you can use maybe just a couple of habaneros or a couple of jalapenos. You can always take the seeds out. If you take the seeds out of the jalapenos, that cuts the heat way down. Um, and, and yeah, you can use bell peppers too. Okay, cool. Or, or like serranos are really um, mild. Any mild pepper you get at the store. These little guys, I'm just taking the stem off and just plopping them right in there. All right, I've got my pile here. I'm good. I'm gonna start by putting the carrots in. Now the carrots, I'm just gonna give them a nice kind of rough chop. You don't have to, this is all gonna get blended later, so you don't have to worry about get everything cut really small. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of cut it up and get it in there. One thing about the carrots is it, it really helps um, make this a really bright orange hot sauce, um, which is just, it kind of comes out really beautiful. So, how are you doing over there? Good. Um how many jalapenos is it going to take to make the jalapeno chips? Because it's looking like um, I I'm would... nervous about the size. No, don't worry about it. Okay. But, you know, whatever it, don't worry about it. Okay. Just get them in there. And if we, it might take about three or four for the jalapeno chips, but okay. that's kind of so secondary. Those. So don't even, yeah, don't worry about it. That's sort of a secondary added bonus added that bonus. we're doing. Yeah. Okay, cool. I discovered in making, I've been making my own hot sauce for a couple of years. Yeah. A couple of years now. And I discovered that like the carrots that you put in here and the jalapenos, once they start fermenting, they take on this great flavor all their own. So sometimes I'll make this and then before I um, blend it all together, I'll pull some of these out and we'll just have like the spicy carrots or the spicy jalapenos. And it's, they're so good. So you can do just spicy carrots if you want and then eat them on tacos or anything, any place you want a little spice. The next thing I'm going to add to my jar is about a half of an onion. I like just a regular yellow onion. I don't use sweet onions. I, I use just a regular onion. Um, and same thing, rough chop doesn't have to be gorgeous. This is all going to get blended up anyway. So Get it right in there. And then, last but not least, my garlic. Um, I love garlic. Yes. We eat a lot of garlic. <laughs> I love it. So I tend to put a lot of garlic in stuff. Um, you can tone down this garlic if you want. If you're not a fan of garlic, I know people are allergic to garlic, don't put it in. You don't have to. It's, this is, what I love about this is this is like a choose your own adventure hot sauce game. You can do whatever you want. Like you can put whatever you want in it, basically. Um, and if it's if it's the flavors that you like that you love, it's you're gonna love it. So now they're just cut these in half, no big deal. I'm gonna actually put 
um, about five garlic heads. And if you can see, I'm literally just taking the clove in the skin, smashing it on my board and it comes, then it'll fall right out of the skin. Really easy, just plopping it in. How many was that? Was that three? Uh, I wasn't counting for you. <laughs> I know, I stopped counting. Um, I think this is four. Is it important to layer it or will it all kind of ferment? It in, all you know? kind of, you know. Because I'm not knowing if like maybe I should add some onion now and then like add some like little layers. Make sure you save room for your onion and your garlic. Okay. But I haven't found layering it makes a bit of difference. It, okay. As it ferments, it'll bubble and it'll move and you kind of are going to be poking this down and shaking this a little bit. Um, during the course of the fermenting process. So I haven't noticed that that's a thing. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna say no. Okay. Okay. All right, so there we go. And I think I put one, two, I think I, you know what? I like garlic, I'm putting one more in. We're just gonna do it again. All right. Another thing that you can add to these hot sauces are herbs and spices. Um, for this particular hot sauce, I'm putting about a teaspoon of coriander seeds just right in there. You can toast them if you want. You can, shoot, you can grind them down if you want. This is all gonna get ground down anyway, so I just throw them in there whole and call it good. So I'm gonna start cutting my onion good. because I'm nervous about- You got this. How much is gonna happen this. where. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. So you can see Carly's got, I don't know, about two thirds of a container of, the jalapenos with the seeds and just everything in there. She's gonna cut up this onion and get that in there as well, and some garlic. And hers is a little simpler. Um, mine's just a little more complex because it just has a few more ingredients. Um, here's a here's a kind of a fun thing. If you have a hot sauce that you love, like you're like, this is the best is the hot sauce I love the most, look at the ingredients list. You can basically copy that just by looking at the ingredients list. Once you know how to do this, um, Tabasco is literally three ingredients. They just have let it um, ferment for a really long period of time. So um, so if Tabasco is like your go-to, it's your favorite, find those red peppers, water and salt, that's all you need. Um, if you like something with a little more flavor, a little more dynamic, add some garlic, add some onion, add coriander, you can add fresh herbs, you can add fruits, you can add other vegetables. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Once you get your peppers and your goodies all in here, you're gonna want to, and wait, I gotta talk about the jar, sorry. This jar was, um, it's a, it's a uh, small mouth, small mouth mason jar, not a yeah. big one. And I did that for a reason. This little shoulder here that you can see on the jar, that'll help keep everything underneath the brine. We're, we're gonna make a brine, pour it in here. These shoulders will kind of help everything stay down. This is a lacto-fermentation, so it happens under the water. It happens in the brine. Anything that's above the brine can go bad. You're gonna to wanna to keep everything pushed down under the surface of the brine water that you have. And I'm gonna show you a couple of easy ways to do that. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add for one mason jar, one quart mason jar, we're gonna add about a tea tablespoon and a half of salt. And like I said, the salt is important. You want a sea salt, a kosher salt, nothing with iodine in it, nothing with anything funny in it, just, just salt, just plain old salt. And then you're gonna add your water. And you're gonna add water just to cover question. Yes. If I'm going to the supermarket to find this type of salt, what mm -hmm. am I looking for? Like, is it going to say, oh, iodized salt? Or... It does. Yeah. If it's okay. iodized, it says iodized. That's the table salt that you get, like in the little shakers. Um, usually, uh, kosher salt comes in the boxes. Um, you then can it will use say sea salt. On yeah, it. It'll okay. say all that. So we've got our water up to about the shoulder and that's good make sure everything can get poked down and stay under. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a top on this to help keep everything submerged. Super simple. You don't have to go buy a fancy weight. You don't, there, there are weights available where you can put a weight in and it holds everything down. And I think there, some are made of ceramic, some are made of glass. 
This is the easiest way to do it. You take just a little snack size Ziploc bag. You fill it about half full with a brine mixture. So you just make, you make brine um, just the way we did here with the salt and the water. And then you pour it in here and you just sort of shove that in there on top and push down until everything is submerged. And then that's it. Huh. Pretty simple. See that? Everything's underwater. Everything is submerged. Okay. Now, we need to let this sit until it's ready. So this can take anywhere from a week to a month, depending on the time of year you're making this, depending on how warm your kitchen is, depending on, there's a lot of variables. So the warmer the environment, the faster it ferments? Usually, yeah, okay. yeah. So in the summer, when you're making this, it'll probably ferment faster than like in the winter when you have a colder kitchen and everything's a little colder. What you don't want is you don't want like bugs, you don't want dust, you don't want stuff to get in here. So here's what I do. I take a coffee filter and I just put it on there like this and then I take the ring and I push this down and give it a twist. What this does is this allows the air and the gases to escape, air to get in, gases to escape, so that really good um, fermentation can happen, but no bugs, no critters, no dirt, nothing will fall into it. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna label this with the date, today's date, or the date that you make it, and then just stick this in a spot. I have a spot in my kitchen that's a little darker because you don't want this in direct sunlight. So you want a spot a little darker, but you don't want to like hide this away from yourself so you forget about it. Um, so I keep it in a corner of my kitchen that stays kind of dark. Um, where you, you, pretty much every day you have to kind of look at it and what happens is, is you'll start seeing bubbles coming up. That's the fermentation process happening. And it, it takes about a day or two, but you'll know it when you see it. And then usually what happens is right along the rim here, you'll get a little like white, almost foam. That's totally fine, no problem. What you don't want is like black mold or, or a bright red mold. If that happens, you kinda gotta just toss it. There's just no way to fix it after that. Um, and don't do the mistake I did. I, I've only had one batch go bad, mm -hmm. like for as long as I've been making it. And I don't really know what happened there. I don't know why it went bad. Um, but don't make the mistake I did and toss the batch into your compost pile. That's a really bad, Oof. bad, bad decision. So just, just toss it away, throw it away outside, get rid of it, start again. Okay. So usually when things turn bad, is that just because um, the jar was introduced to bad bacteria? Yeah, it can be that. Sometimes um, you do need to start with your jars really clean. I pop these right out of the, um, the dishwasher so I knew they were clean. I, I think sometimes just stuff happens. You know, we're, we're dealing with a natural process and it doesn't always go according to plan. I mean, it just, things happen. Okay. So Carly right. has this pretty full, looks good. She's gonna add her right. tablespoon and a half of salt. Tablespoon and a half. Mm -hmm. And then her water right up to the shoulder line. And then I'm gonna make this little um, weight for her. I'm gonna take that Ziploc bag, just pour it in here, about half full. What happens if you accidentally put in too much salt? You know, I mean, I don't think I did, but just you know, in case. I don't, I don't know. Then you okay. have a salty, then it's salty? A little bit more salty. Maybe a little more salty? I'm not really okay. sure. That's, that's a good question, because I don't really know. And then water goes in? So water goes to in top? right to about the, right about here. Okay. So what happens if I don't have a 16 ounce jar, I only have like a 12 ounce jar and I only want to make a small batch just in case because I'm scared and a little bit fermentation more. is scary. A little bit more. Um, no, fermentation is not scary. It's so easy. It's so easy. It's how not would I alter the, the, um, the salt to water ratio for different size jars? Good question. So the brine that I made here um, was three cups of water, to um, a tablespoon and a half of salt. Okay. 
So that's that's the brine I use. Different people use different different types of brine. Like some people use really light brines. I don't mind the salty factor, so I make my brine a little salty. Okay. So we're gonna pop this guy in here and push it down. Now, the reason we use brine in these is because sometimes they leak, and you don't want to leak fresh water to dilute that. You want it. You want it to. Um, if it leaks at all, you want it to be um, the brine that you're already using. All right, so we're gonna pop this over the top. Okay. Okay. Here's another helpful hint, and this is this is because something that not everybody will tell you. When you are letting these ferment, put them in like a sheet pan or something, because they do sometimes ferment right up and out. That's not a bad thing. Big, vigorous fermentation isn't bad. You just don't want it all over your counter. Right, I'm just I'm admiring my work. It's beautiful. She does good work. <laughs> okay. okay, so, so I'm gonna slice these jalapenos next. Yes. What am I doing? So, so this is just something that's a little bit extra that I'm showing you. This is these are gonna be just sliced fermented jalapenos. Carly right now is just taking the stem off. She's gonna slice these into into nice little slices and pop them into her jar. The difference is gonna be this hot sauce, the hot sauce that we made, we're gonna let these ferment completely. These are gonna ferment on our counter for a week, two weeks, even up to a month. These are gonna ferment for a long time. So when it's done fermenting, the, the, the vegetables and the fruit itself will be kind of mushy. They'll be kind of soft. They'll be really good for liquefying into our sauce. What Carly's doing now, we're only gonna ferment for a few days. We're gonna let this start fermenting. It might take a day or two to start. Once it starts fermenting, we're only going to let it ferment for a couple of days. We're not going to let it go the full month or whatever it takes because we want these to stay kind of crispy. We'll want them to have a little bit of a bite to them. Okay. So, um, what's fun about these and why I make them at the same time is that I really want to taste like how it's going and what's happening. And so making these, you can taste them right away and see how they're going. Um, and that's what you're gonna to wanna to do. After you notice the bubbles start to come up, you're gonna look at it and maybe give it a day or so and then start tasting them until they get to the consistency and the um, texture that you like. So we're gonna just pop those in there. Same, same, same. So garlic and onion. Garlic and, and onion, yep. Stuff. Garlic okay, and cool. onion. I'm gonna help you get some garlic together. Cool. Um, cool. I have found that um, I, I do love garlic, but I've also found you can get to a point where there's too much garlic. So four or five cloves in each of these is perfect. For this smaller one, I'm gonna just do two and I'm gonna kind of chop them up smaller because we're not putting this into a blender. I'm gonna give this a good chop so that it's not big hunks sort of floating around in there. It's just the smaller pieces. And we are leaving the seeds and the membrane in. If you like a milder jalapeno, take the membrane and the seeds out. It's totally up to you. Like I said, this is a choose your own adventure. You get to do whatever you want. Um, so some other fruits that were really good, um, mango. You okay. can put mango in and do like a mango jalapeno. Another really fun thing is you can roast these, um, these uh, jalapenos, sorry. You can roast the jalapenos, get them a little charred and make like a charred jalapeno hot sauce. Um, yeah, you're kind of only limited to just what you can think of. This this is really a good recipe. These are really good recipes. So we are gonna get this in there and I'm gonna cut an onion because we're gonna put about a quarter of an onion. This is a smaller batch. And I don't want the onion to overpower, but here's a fun thing. These onions are going to ferment too, and they're so good. If you chop them up and put them like in a taco or, um, I've actually taken these and chopped them up and made, um, sort of a spicy sauce for fish. So like a spice, you add a little mayonnaise. I know it sounds weird. You add some mayonnaise, chop this up really nice, and then you get like a spicy sauce for fish. So if you want to make even fish tacos or just just to have them. So we're gonna slice these into nice slices. I'll just put them in there. All right. 
And then, ta-da. <laughs> okay, perfect. So for this small batch, I've already made um, some brine. So we're gonna just pour that in there. And the brine is three cups to, um, of water to uh, about a tablespoon and a half of salt. All right, so we've got this lovely thing. Now, here's here's a fun trick, and I just started doing that like literally this summer. For these kinds of pick, for these sorry, I keep saying pickles. For these kind of brined um, and fermented um, peppers, because we're not letting them sit for like maybe a month or longer instead of putting a baggie in there with the brine to weight it down, I'm gonna actually take some of this onion and I'm gonna cut a round of onion out of the onion. I gotta make it a little bit smaller. So you're gonna take this, see? And we're gonna just make a circle. And we're gonna just stuff that in there. There we go, right on top. See how that lodges underneath the neck here? And that just, that's gonna hold everything down. Huh, yeah, that's so cool. you don't have to worry about the other stuff because, and because this is gonna be so fast, this is literally gonna be three or four days, it's gonna be just fine. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna pop this lovely coffee filter on and stick it on and that's it now we wait that's the hardest part um, I'm gonna be doing some updates to show you how this is progressing and how it's gonna be moving along throughout the course of the next maybe couple of weeks to a month when these are ready I'll show you what they look like Carly will take them out we'll try them um, yeah cool. so that's it super simple really easy and like I said, the hardest part is just waiting for them to be. So this is my little corner of my kitchen where I keep my fermented things. This is what we just made today. See? And this. These I made about a week or so ago. These are going to be um, fermented radishes that I had. And these are fermented carrots carrots and I've got beets in there. These are going to be amazing. So these are going to just stay fermenting and these are going to just start fermenting. I'm very excited. So here we are. This is three days since we packaged this all up and got it in the brine and set it aside. Can you see the bubbles forming in there? That is the fermentation process happening. So every day what I do is I give it a little shake and let those bubbles go up to the top. See how they kind of rise to the top? Just give it a little shake. See, look at that. Woo! All the bubbles. Okay, this is the chips that we were making. We're gonna actually taste them today and see if they're ready. Because we're gonna be having these as chips and not as hot sauce, we don't want them to get too squishy. Okay, and then here is this. So you can see this is my favorite part because you can see stuff happening like see all the bubbles going up to the top that's so cool all right so as long as that's happening that means the fermentation fermentation process is happening and that's what you want you want all the bubbles when you go a day or two and there's just not a lot of bubbles there's not a lot going on it's pretty much done and then we can process it so that's what we're waiting for. Although we are gonna, Carly, you wanna take the lid off of this guy. We're gonna look down in there. That looks so good. See that onion kept everything down and submerged. Oops, sorry. All, look at all the bubbles coming up. That's all the fermentation that's happening. We're gonna actually reach in here and pull one out. And Carly is gonna be our taste tester. Are you ready? Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. Ah. Uh, Oh, I can hear the crunch. How are they? Ooh. Spicy, crunchy, tasty. Mm, are they ready? Crunchy. 
Oh, very spicy. Um, oh no. <laughs> delicious. So good. <laughs> So there you go. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna put a lid back on these guys because Carly says they're ready. So we're gonna pop these into the refrigerator. The refrigerator basically just slows down the process a lot. Um, it doesn't actually arrest the process altogether. So if you wanna keep that nice crunchy flavor, crunchy texture, you need to eat these within a certain, you know, relative shorter length of time. The longer they sit in your fridge, the longer they will keep sort of slowly fermenting and the, they'll sort of soften. But right now, if you want them like crunchy and spicy and perfect, eat them now. Day six. Look at the bubbles. Oh yeah. Give it a shake. Look at them all, that's awesome. Perfect. Let's see over here, what are we doing? Fermentation. Okay, so the bubbles have slowed down. It's been about a week and a half. You can see that there's a few, so a little bit of fermentation is still taking place. But for the most part, um, there's not a lot of bubbles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and we're gonna blend them up and make our hot sauce. This is ready to go. It's really fragrant. It, um, it's been about a week and a half. So I'm gonna put it into the Vitamix, I'm gonna mix it all up, and it's hot sauce, it's ready to go. That's it, that's all you have to do. Remember we had that bag in there, we're gonna just take that out, shake it a little bit. Honestly, whoo, it really smells good. It's very spicy. Come on, there we go. Just put it all in there. Turn it on the Vitamix, and we'll see what happens. It's so spicy. The air is really spicy right now. If you don't have a Vitamix, you can use a blender. It just takes a little longer sometimes. I'm going to keep this up a notch. Get everything good and mixed. And that's it. That's our hot sauce. We'll pour it back into the jar and put it in the fridge. This is something that does need to be in the refrigerator. You shouldn't leave it um, out. It's not a, we haven't canned it. So it does need to be refrigerated. If you like it, my husband and I kind of like it a little bit chunky. We like it with some of the bigger pieces. If you don't like it, keep straining it. Isn't that pretty? Look at how beautiful that is. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna do the Jalapenos? Couldn't be easier. I'm gonna put a lid on these, stick them in the fridge, and we're done.